This weather pattern will be seemingly relentless for the next week or so, with cooler air in the east, warmer air in the west, but eventually we've got to have something give to bring a big blast to shake things up, and that's exactly what we're going to see next week, with warmer than average air filtering into a lot more areas of the country. Got the details on the entire pattern from land of the tropics coming up, so stick around. One nation weather. Thank you so much for joining me here in this new video. As always, WeatherBell is what I use for my model maps throughout the, my videos, so make sure that you check them out down there in the description with their free trial link. Also, if you're new to my channel, you can hit that subscribe button down below the video to help me get to my next subscriber goal, which is 5,000. I'm at 4,328 right now. If you want those consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts, go ahead and hit that button down below. As always, timestamps are in the description if you want to skip ahead to any part of the video, but let's start with the current pattern and future radar. Here we go with a cold front. That's what I'm drawing out right now. This is is going to be sitting over a lot of the eastern United States, specifically from parts of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast regions there from there eastward all the way on up there towards parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. All these areas along the East Coast, all those coastal states, a lot of showers and thunderstorms as we head towards our Thursday afternoon. It's all in connection to those L's you see in Illinois, Southeast Canada. There's one in New York there. Those are all low pressure systems associated with an upper level piece of energy that's going to keep things active to finish off the week. There will be some marginally severe thunderstorms, but nothing too intense here. The same is honestly going to go here with a lot of this activity sinking under that low with a new little system working its way through parts of the central plains and northern plains as we go towards our late Friday, June 7th, heading into our early Saturday, June 8th of 2024. If you live in eastern Colorado, eastern Wyoming, heading on out into the Dakotas, Minnesota, parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, even into Oklahoma, all these states, probably some showers and thunderstorms late Friday, heading into early Saturday, and at least isolated to scattered fashion at the minimum. Depending on the energy these have to tap into, we could see, again, a few of these go severe, and we'll see how many of those could linger into our Saturday over the central plains, heading towards the Midwest, but we'll probably see at least some new rounds of some showers and storms sinking under this low pressure system that's still in the upper levels over southeast Canada and the northeastern United States late Saturday heading into early Sunday. You can see those greens from parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio all the way on back over there towards eastern Colorado. No severe weather outbreaks out of this, but storms to track in those areas. I was just circling there on Sunday in the early part of the day after late Saturday storms as well. Here we go towards the end of Sunday here. This is as we head towards 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the afternoon and evening. This is pretty much some of the final precipitation that's going to come out of this weather pattern for a lot of the southern and eastern United States. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms, most of them probably subsevere late Sunday heading into early Monday over that region as some cooler air begins to sink in there. But on the opposite side of the country in the west, banking up against that precipitation you see in Idaho, Montana, all the way in some spots of the Rockies down there to Texas and Oklahoma. Notice how that precipitation is kind of being forced northward there in parts of Washington, Idaho, Montana. I drew those arrows for a reason. We've got a heat dome building over that area, and that's what's going to cause that in the weather pattern. Also notice, just in terms of precipitation towards the early to mid part of next week, a little bit more unsettled as we've got some clashing air masses here in the central United States come early to mid part of next week. So as we go through the 10th, 11th, 12th of June, might be a little bit more active here from Texas all the way up there towards parts of the upper Midwest and upper Mississippi River Valley. Still a little uncertain what this is going to mean for severe weather chances, but it certainly does not look like any sort of outbreaks are going to come out of this. We'll start to maybe turn our attention towards our next real severe weather events at the end of next week, heading towards next weekend. What I want to break down right now is your mid-level jet stream. I love to use this for severe weather, but let's just talk about this in the overall pattern here. 15 to 20,000 feet above your head here in America or in Canada where I just circled here. See that area of the whites and the grays there in Southeast Canada at the end of this week? That is where we've got a gap in the jet stream. That's because there is not only some surface low pressure, but also some mid to upper level low pressure down here in this region. And that's what's fueling the Northwest flow on the underside of it because it's channeling that counterclockwise flow. And underneath it, that means the winds are coming west to east over a lot of the United States here. You could even argue that this is northwest to southeast in a lot of cases with this flow from Montana all the way there to the east coast in the mid-Atlantic, and that's why I'm drawing these arrows out. I mean, that is a very strong belt of flow really from Montana where we've got some of those at least 60 knot mid to upper level jet winds here all the way in over there to places like New York there, where you can see right there on places like New York City. I mean, the jet stream is going to be flowing at about 80 knots there, 15 to 20,000 feet above where you're standing there on ground level. If you're getting in a plane that's heading towards Europe, there's going to be some pretty good tailwinds behind you there heading in that direction as well. So keep that in mind. That might be useful for you. But anyway, here's what we've got going on in the pattern into early next week. What you can see here is that while 
areas north of this line are feeling that northwesterly flow, feeling that cooler than average air for at least this time of the year. It doesn't mean it's going to be frigid. What you can see here is south of this line and even in parts of California, Nevada, some spots that I don't have um, under the line right here, we're going to have a lot of warmer than average air and it could be very scorching in a lot of cases with temperatures 110 plus in a lot of the southwest. So here we go. Let's look at that on the temperature anomaly maps. Let's start with cool down number one for the east, which is going to come as we head towards the early part of this weekend, really even the end of this week, already starting to feel that lower humidity and this cooler air draping itself over especially parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, surrounding areas. This is your ensemble uh, of the European collection here. So this is a collection of models being averaged on out to what you're seeing on screen. It looks like about 10 to 15 degrees below average can be expected for your temperature anomalies from Tennessee on up there to Indiana, Ohio. That's where this is going to be peaking around early Saturday, nonetheless. A lot of the, you know, east at least a little bit below average. Meanwhile, where I just drew those arrows going northward from parts of California, Nevada, all the way over there to Arizona and New Mexico, heading northward and eastward from there. We're trying to see this heat dome expand, but we're going to get that next surge of cooler air that's going to actually try to infiltrate some of that in New Mexico, Arizona, and especially Texas and Oklahoma as we head towards the early part of next week. This is as we head towards the end of our Monday, June 10th of 2024. Some of those spots where you're seeing those deeper blues, those greens over a lot of the eastern half of the United States there, and especially the east central parts. That's where it's going to be about 10 to 20 degrees below normal for this time of the year. So a refreshing cool down for a lot of spots that have been hot lately, and especially Texas and Oklahoma, where there's been a lot of triple digits. There will be a little bit of a try to, we'll at least try to see a little bit of a break there as we head towards the early part of next week. But that cool air begins to die on down by the time we head towards the midweek time frame. And look what happens there over the west. The ridging that's been more confined towards California, Oregon, Washington, surrounding areas during the early part of the week, that's able to re-expand on over a lot of areas there in the west as you saw on screen. So before we talk about what's going to happen longer range with that heat dome building eastward, let's talk about daily high and low temperatures here in the near term. All right, if you're south of this line, we're looking at lots of 60s and 70s as we head towards our Thursday, June 6th in the morning. Look at all these circles over here in the southwest. Anytime you see a circle and I'm talking about a morning low, that's where you're looking at record breaking warm temperatures. So we're looking at 70s in some spots of California down there in some of the valleys. We're looking at some 80s getting going there in southern Nevada and the Las Vegas region, parts of southwest Arizona. These are going to be some record-breaking warm lows. Look at the boxes in the afternoon. Anytime you see a box in the afternoon, that's a record warm high. We're going to have plenty of those. I mean, it's some of those deeper fuchsia shades trying to get on there, if that's what you want to call the color there in parts of California, Nevada, surrounding areas. 110 plus. Look at that over here. It's still not going to be cool. That's for sure in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, down to Arkansas, as well as Louisiana, where we've got temperatures well above 90 degrees in a lot of cases. This is the line where we're going to divide from the warmer air to the cooler. You could see Thursday afternoon up there in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northwestern parts of Michigan in that upper peninsula. Lots of spots in the 60s and 50s in the morning on Friday. We'll be down into the mid 50s in a lot of these spots, even some 40s closer to that Canadian border in northern parts of North Dakota, northern Minnesota. South of this line is where we've got a lot more of those 60s, but even Missouri cooling on down nicely on Friday morning. Here we go towards the afternoon. Again, more record-breaking highs now moving their way in up there towards parts of central Idaho. We've got these east of uh, the Sierra Nevada range there heading out of California towards parts of Oregon as well. And you can see exactly how this flows with that upper level to mid-level pattern here. we got the troughing in the east. That's why it's in the 60s and 70s over a lot of the Great Lakes and into the Midwest. Meanwhile, that's why we're in the 80s and 90s south of this line. Line. Always check weather.gov for your latest weather alerts, and that does include heat here because we're going to have a lot of those down here in the southwestern quadrant of the United States as we go over the course of the next week at least. Here we go towards Saturday, June 8th of 2024 in the morning. This is what our lows are looking like. Parts of Texas, Oklahoma, surrounding areas, lots of 70s, but look at this up there in the Ohio Valley. Very nice in the 50s for a lot of spots. If you consider cooler air nice, then this is great for you up there. Lots of the north central quarter of the United States as well in the 50s in the northeast. Same deal. These spots in the spots I'm circling here Saturday afternoon, plenty of 70s to go around. Very beautiful, not lots of sunshine in a lot of cases as well. Down here in those areas I circled though in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and then back on over there towards Arizona, Las Vegas, and eastern and southeastern California. You know, that's where we're in that triple digits in a lot of spots. Sunday morning, there are those circles for those record-breaking morning warm temperatures. A lot of the southeastern quadrant of the United States actually surprisingly warm on Sunday as well with some 60s and 70s around, but you can still see the dent that our temperatures are having here as we head towards Sunday. I mean, look at those 60s and 70s as far south as Missouri to Kentucky to Virginia, that kind of line there. Monday morning, June 10th of 2024, this is when that next cool down starts to try and progress south. 40s and 50s for a lot in the north. 
Still some 60s and 70s in these areas. I'm dashing out here, but look at this Monday afternoon. I think this really goes to show you what's happening. Look at that West Texas. We cool down a little bit. The warmth spreads a little northward from there with some 70s and 80s, but it's a very broad, nice 70 and 80 degree range here progressing from south to north there from the Gulf Coast region towards the north central United States. So you could definitely see how even Texas briefly cools down next week. But on the 6 to 10 day range here, this is what we're looking at for the 11th through the 15th of June. Cooler than average air looking likely over a lot of the southeastern quadrant of the United States, at least during the start of that period. But look at what's overtaken from the west. Warmer than average here, those pinks in the mountain west indicating very high likelihood of well above average temperatures during that time frame. During the 8 to 14 day range, so as we head towards the 13th through the 19th of June, look at this, warmer than average air all the way here, and this is what I'm about to break down for you here, as we're going to have that big blast of warmth. Now moving on up towards the Great Lakes, parts of the Midwest, and a lot of the country at least a little bit above average. This means spots as far north as Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, we might try to push towards the 90s with this kind of setup here, even in the northeastern United States as well. That same kind of setup in the 8 to 14 day range looks below average of precipitation for a quarter from the Ohio Valley to the northeast. A little bit above average in the far southern United States as well as in a lot of the northwestern uh, quarter of the country. All stuff we're going to be keeping an eye on down the line and particularly those temperatures. That's what I wanted to talk about with this big blast down the line. That's what's in the thumbnail. That's what I talked about some in the intro. Here we are breaking it down. Here we go towards Thursday of next week. We're a pretty good ways out already here looking at June 13th of 2024. That's why we're using ensembles. The models coming together to form that average to show us what's likely going to be going on here. Getting some of that agreement that we're going to have temperatures at least 10 to 20 degrees above average here over a lot of I Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, uh, Colorado, and Utah here as we head towards the end of next week but notice how these warmer temperatures i think as we go towards beyond our thursday heading towards our friday and saturday that's when we're going to see these transition eastward along with some dry air that's already sitting over some of these areas we're going to see that warm potentially maybe drier heat but there could still be some humidity with this building eastward does this look extreme right now no but even getting 5 10 to maybe 15 degrees above average over a lot of this region that i'm circling here by the time we head towards the tuesday june 18th of 2024 time frame would bring a lot of spots into the 90s and remember that this would have shifted east out of parts of the upper midwest and north central united states from a few days earlier as well to what i just showed just like this in the canadian ensemble system which is what we're looking at right now that's what the cmc is shows immense warmth as we head towards the end of next week over the dakotas minnesota iowa wisconsin illinois indiana ohio and michigan if i just called you guys out this is a something I normally wouldn't use, but this is just to show an outlier that's on the higher side and shows the reach of what we could see with 15 to 20 degree above average temperatures, not only there, but as we head towards next weekend, Sunday, June 16th is what we're looking at here. And again, this is just an overall broad time frame. Focus on the days around it, not just the specific day and time that you see on screen. Look at this, more 15 to 20 degree above average anomalous warmth over the north central United States come that time frame so that's something we got to watch see if we can get to that higher end and that would definitely be something worth watching down the line now something also worth watching down the line is that the tropics are about to ramp up and in today's edition of two minutes of tropics that i'm throwing in here at the end of our weather video for june 5th of 2024 that's exactly what we're talking about we will probably see an uptick in tropical activity in the caribbean heading into the gulf into the middle of june and that's not a surprise because look at what we're looking at here june 11 through 20th your tropical cyclone points of origin according to the national hurricane center's graphic from 1851 to 2015 look where everything tends to originate near central america into the gulf of mexico so that's the area of interest that we're going to be watching here and let's play things out to see what's going on first of all look in the caribbean and gulf of mexico as we head towards june 9th this is an ensemble system surrounding the gfs so an average of models given us where that precipitation is likely to be looks like the western caribbean will be active but not too many spots in the caribbean like cuba being extremely directly impacted by the worst rainfall yet that changes by the time we go towards June 11th to June 12th. Look at this. Along a front that's probably going to be trying to come off the southeast coast by the indications of this particular set anyway. Things could change. It looks like there's going to be a lot of precipitation off the southeast coast. Down in Florida as well, where we could have some big flooding issues as we head towards the middle of the month. Into Cuba as well. And look at some of these darker green zones I'm circling right now. You see some of those darker greens in the western tip of Cuba heading towards Florida. This is where we've seen the GFS model itself, the individual model here, not the ensemble collection. Honestly, overhype it a little bit with the intensity of this possibly becoming a hurricane. 
but we have seen indications of like a strong tropical storm or low end hurricane forming there in parts of the Caribbean and into the Gulf around the mid month time frame, somewhere between the 12th and the 18th. This is your global tropics hazards outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for June 12th through the 18th. This is that range that I just talked about here on the channel. And I think it's something that we got to really watch for, for at least, you know, some tropical depression or tropical storm development. I don't really think a hurricane's likely at this point, but we could definitely at least see, and this is showing above average probabilities for precipitation and tropical storm development there where I'm pointing the arrow in the Eastern Pacific and in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean region as we head towards that time frame. So it's something we got to watch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss an update on the tropics or on whatever's going on on land. Thanks so much for joining me in this update, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and Thursday as well. See you back with the next video Friday or Saturday at the latest. One Nation Weather.